Hey, what's up? How's it going? Don here. So, let's take a look at some prints that I did with uh, Frozen Sonic Mini. So, how's it going, guys? Don here. Well, <laughs> man, that printer's been running non-stop for a couple of days now. And, oh, everything's okay, I must say. <coughs> Did have a couple of surprises, but, uh, well, let's all talk about that. <laughs> but first off, uh, on the... USB stick. There were two files on there. Um, ring with 0.3 and ring with 0.5 layer height. Uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.03 of course. Yeah. But uh, I printed both of them. And here they are. But what's really strange, I you, I don't know. I mean, even if I put on my reading glasses and use a uh, magnifying glass, I don't. I'm not going to be able to see the uh, difference because uh, both of them look <laughs> really good. But, uh, yeah, enough from them. Then I went on, and I thought, well, let me print out a figure and see how that would come out. And then I have this um, uh, Spell Speaking Elf. And as you can see, that thing came out really nice. It's about, um, I did enlarge it a little bit. Uh, how big is it? Do, 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 do. Seven, seven and a half, almost, almost eight centimeters tall. Yeah. Then I changed the resin, went from the gray that was delivered to this um, uh, skin color, or whatever you want to call it, beige. Then I did another one. This one is from um, my mini factory, I think it is. I'll try to find the links to all the files and I'll put them down in the description if you want to take a look at the files. They were all free. I didn't have to buy any. But here's another one. I thought that guy looks cool. That's also an elf, I think. With wings, shield, and spear. I mean, that guy looks cool. And what I do see in a second. Huh. Oh, yes. I forgot to take off the support. Oh, and uh, really, a, bit. a good tip, a good tip, and I am not lying, I am not lying, when I say, after it's printed, clean it off with IPA, and then take your time and take off all of the support. Don't do it after you have already put it in a UV light to harden up. Don't do it after that because you're going to have a hell of a lot of problems. And uh, yeah, anyway, okay. Got that one little support off that was right there. But uh, yeah. 
I mean, this figure is also, yeah, a little bit taller, almost nine centimeters tall, eight and a half, nine centimeters. That one looks cool too. And I see a couple of more supports. Oh man, gotta take them off later. But anyway, while it was going so good, I found this one. <laughs> Mandarin with the baby Yoda. I gotta print out the uh, the plate form to stand on because uh, this guy won't stand alone on the table. He'll fall over because of this weight here. And you don't even have to put a drainage hole in it because there is already a drainage hole on there. <laughs> I didn't put that in. It was already there. Yes, and I do print all of these hollow to save a little bit of resin, of course. You know how that is. <laughs> and then went on Darth Vader, of course. I mean, I've got to print some some Star Wars figures. You know, as a, as a sci-fi fan, I do have to print some. As you can see here is uh, Darth Vader, and then I got Boba Fett, yeah, this guy looks cool, with all of his weapons and jetpack on it, it's all printed in one, there was a lot of support on there, I used uh, the fine support. That's one thing you also have to be very careful with, is which support do you use? You have a fine, a middle, and then a strong one. They're all pretty, you know, set up in, in um, Cheetah Box when you uh, install it, and then you install the drivers for the Frozen Sonic Mini. You have a, a .3 and a uh, 0 0.03 and a 0 0.05 um, profiles that you can install. Only thing I did is just edit mine a little bit, uh, mainly having to do with infill and so, so that uh, you know, use as little as possible for uh, the resin. I mean, you stop to think about the resin cost. Oh. 30, 32, 34, 35 euros for a half a liter of uh, resin. Hmm. That is not, not good at all. I mean, you know, they've been talking a long time now for... Uh, getting the prices down to where you could say a liter of resin does not cost more than one kilo of filament. Whereby if that is going to work out correctly, you know, one liter of resin, can you get as many prints out as you would with uh, one kilo of, re of, of filament? I would like to make that test. I would like to make that test just to see if that is possible. But, <laughs> now first off, I don't have the money to where I could start doing such a test, you know. Unless, of course, one of the resin and filament suppliers is. Uh, thinking I'd like to see that and then sends me you know what's needed to do it but until the meantime yeah then of course I printed out the Eiffel Tower now this was really interesting I must say 
and I'm pretty sure that the camera is not going to get it. But, uh, maybe it does. Wait a minute, I need something to point with. Now, you see this right here, I hope. See that right there? There are really hair fine strings coming down for the railing on all four sides I mean when I look through there I can I can see this they're thinner than a hair they, they are thinner than a hair I mean that's really amazing but what was really funny is when uh, when um, I took it off the build plate cleaned it up in IPA uh, I wasn't careful with the toothbrush because um, I have this right here and this is supposed to be the outer railing railing that was on the outer edge but for some reason I do not even see any type of uh, pins or pulls whatever you want to call it coming up you know where that railing is supposed to be attached to I don't know what was going on there Uh oh, getting Facebook messages from a good friend. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I mean, really, really fine details. That's mean. That's something that I cannot get with an FDM printer. And uh, then. I don't remember where I saw this. I think it was by Angus Maker's Niece, where he printed this one out. I had to print it out too because I think that thing looks cooler, you know. I had to print this one out. That's really cool. I think if I make this even bigger, or even in this size, I could print it out with. Uh, with the FDM printer, of course. I was thinking about making it even smaller, but uh, mm, no. You know, I'm one of those guys that always says print big or go home. <laughs> but anyway, did that. And then a friend of mine was asking me, yeah, <coughs> Don, tell me. <clears throat> What do you think it would be like if you printed out some tire rims for a model? And I said, well, uh, send me the STL file and let me take a look and see how that's going to be. And he sent me the STL file for this one. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, sorry, man. Chronic bronchitis, you know, I'm not sure exactly what's called in English, but uh, yeah, the bronchial problems. Uh, five centimeters in diameter, yeah. And 2.8 in the width. Oh, and here you can see the reason why I said uh, make sure you take off the support before you harden your object. Take a look here. You might be able to see some scratches here in this middle part here where it's light and dark. Yeah. 
That's where I forgot to take off some support, and that support was almost welded into the object because it was, <clears throat> I don't know, really close to, really, really close to the wall. But uh, anyway, I got it off. See another one that I have to take off. <coughs> And, uh, yeah, that was enough from all the testing that I was doing and everything. But, one second, let me get something here. I almost forgot to mention this. Oh, man. The main reason why I needed a resin printer, the main reason why is of course for this model here. Now take a look. Printed yesterday. This one, these two cannons, this cannon up here, this little antenna here. I mean, that thing is little. And Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me take a look. That should be hard enough now. Oh. Let me show you guys something else. <laughs> this plastic bucket right here. That's where I can plug it in. I'll show you close up in just a second. You know, plastic bucket. Then I cut a small hole out and I put the plug right into it so that it won't move. And then I started taping my UV lights around the edges. Whereby I found out that five meters are not enough. Oh, and I have a. Uh, drill that I can put on the bottom. It holds it up a little bit higher so that there's almost two rings of LED lights below so that uh, something like this can get light from underneath. And this has been in there for a couple of hours now. <laughs> so that should be more than enough. And yeah, there we go. There's the cannon on the back of it. Now these square areas that you see right here, and there are a lot of them. I think it's somewhere around 23, 24, 25 or more. What I'll have to do there is get a translucent resin. A clear resin. I think that would be the best. Just get a clear resin and print out all of the windows. And then I do have a pack of colored LEDs that I got last year from eBay, China. Took about six weeks to come. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, where are they? Right here. Uh, there they are. Got those in January. There are three and five millimeter, whereby I think I'm going to need a lot of the three millimeters for that one, you know, and then print all the windows. The windows are like a box with a wall and open on the back side so that you can put some LEDs in there. That was really thoughtful. Now the only thing I have to do now is just print the rest of the cannons. Whoa, man. I mean, that's, that's going to be fun. That's really going to be fun because 
let me see here. You need to print 20 pieces of a spotlight that will be glued around on that model. And then another cannon, top gun, you need to print 22 pieces. Oh, man. Yeah. And then for the window, for the window, there is uh, W1, W2, W4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Right and left. Okay, I'm talking about over 30 windows that have to be printed out. And he also says LED, for each window you can apply LEDs. Sanix. Link to this model if you want to print one out. Uh, I'll be more than happy to put a link down in the description for this uh, Ausmerzer battleship because uh, that's really one hell of a model. one hell of a model. I must say, I, l I love that thing. And, the first part of it, you know, printing it with FDM, that was that was easy, you know, printing printing all the big parts and putting it together. Even the feet were printed. Yeah, as you can see, there's some part, there's some cannons that got to come on the bottom too. Oh man! <laughs> and uh, yeah. I thought that's cool. I got that model, started printing it out. Yeah, I was even printing all the all of the big parts, and also for the uh, for the engines, parts that are here. There's one in there, this one, and then this one, and then this part right here. Oh man, I was having fun. <laughs> A lot of support too. But uh, yeah, I mean, cool. Absolutely cool. And I think it's even going to look a lot cooler when I get everything finally printed out. But one thing's for sure, I am going to get a bottle of clear resin next month and uh, print out all the windows and then um, wire it up with some LEDs. Just not sure exactly with the voltage and everything. I mean there is when you think there's going to be about 30 LEDs, 40 LEDs on a 9 volt block battery. If somebody can figure that out for me and tell me which ohmage, ohmage from um, resistors that I'll have to use on each one of the LEDs. <laughs> Because I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I do have a nice collection here. I'm pretty sure I can get all the way. If I remember correctly, it's uh, 47. Forty seven ohm ten K one K four hundred and seventy ohm one hundred ohm six K eight. Hmm. Okay. Forty seven K no sixty eight K two hundred and twenty. What's this one? Four hundred and seventy. That's a 47. Yeah. 
I've got a wide range of um, resistors here. So I'm pretty sure I can get that job done. Just keep them in the bag for right now so that I don't lose anything with the resistors because this is a special package. And I'm sure with a little bit of help I can get that job done. Somebody can make a comment down in the description which homage I will need by 35, yeah, somewhere around 35 um, 3 millimeter resistor, uh, uh, LEDs, also the small ones, and uh, 9 volt lock battery as a power supply, I think. Or maybe even, which would be a lot easier, of course, for me, put a socket in there and use a 5 volt uh, power supply. That's something I could do too. So let me know in the description which one would be easier and what homage would be good. That would be helpful. That would be helpful if somebody could tell me that without me having to try and figure out where to get the information. <laughs> but um, <coughs> as to this resin printer, now I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm seeing in Facebook in the frozen group postings over there. I'm not sure if it's Canada or USA. You can get this printer for around 200 US dollars. When I go to FEP shop that's sitting over in the Netherlands, 360 five or sixty nine euros three hundred yeah for the printer alone without any resin I mean what's going on there because uh, that's a hell of a difference you know so I don't know what to say but um, is this printer good Hell yeah. Is it fast? Oh, yes. I mean, uh, with its support and then three rings, okay, we all know. It doesn't make any difference if you print one or if you print three. Yeah? Or six or nine or twelve. Yeah? It doesn't make any difference with the DLP. But it only took two hours to print. And this figure right here took four hours printed with uh, 0.3 layer height, uh, 0 0.03, yeah. Uh, took four, three and a half, four hours, something like that. I am your father. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy took four hours. It's also zero three layer height because I wanted to see how much detail I can get out from one of these figures when it's so small. And uh, Boba Fett. That guy took four and a half hours. I mean, this thing was really going fast. Of course, that's how it is when you're using a monochrome screen and it's only black or white, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, figures that are absolutely cool.
camera focusing? Yeah, it's focusing now. You know. But uh, can I say go buy this one? Hell yeah. If you can get it for two hundred dollars, go and get it. The thing is cool. Cool, cool, cool. Frozen Sonic Mini. Yes. <laughs> that is really one one hell of a printer, I must say. It's the only thing that I'm not really too happy with is with the supplies that come with it. It's only one pair of gloves in there. Lasted a while, but it at one point, I did have to change them, throw them away, start using my gloves that I got through Amazon. But uh, two things are missing, and I mean, if over in America you can get that pr that printer for two hundred dollars, I mean that's cool. Okay. And I won't say anything at all except for get it. Yeah? And then use a couple of dollars, get some filters and get some extra FEP films. Yeah. But at over three hundred and sixty euros here in Europe, yeah. That's two things that should be in the supply package with the printer. Yeah. A couple of FEP films. And a couple of filters. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, the filters in Amazon three, four euros, and I get a package of 100 or 50 or I don't know, a lot of them. And yeah, down in the description, there'll be my Amazon wish list. Still a couple of things that I need to get to make sure that I have everything here for it before something happens and I'm sitting there and, and I can't print anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no offense, of course, for my, for my uh, curing box, I do need another five meters of uh, UV LEDs. Yeah, I thought five meters would be enough. No, uh -uh, it's not enough. If you get LEDs and you want to put it in a bucket like I did, yeah, get the 10 meter. Then you have enough LEDs in there to really lighten that thing up. Because, well, I'm not sure if two hours is enough, but um, I had some objects in there. I think four or five hours, six hours, seven hours, I don't know. I just, you know, after I cleaned them with the IPA, wait until they were dry, and then I put them in there and just let it run, you know. And then <laughs> half a day later or the next day, whatever, just like this tire this tire rim here. I put that in there yesterday evening, yesterday night when it was finished and uh, I went to bed and took it out this morning, cleaned it up a little bit, took off the support that was welded on in the middle. Yeah, but um, Cool. Cool. Anyway, I do think that is enough for now. As always, y'all take care. Happy printing. Check out the links down in the description for the one or the other. Uh, coffee. I haven't had any coffee in a long time. Buy me a coffee. <laughs>
No, but uh, don't forget to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Always good. And check out some of my other videos in there, too. Do need a lot of watch time. That's so stupid, though, with that 4,000 watch hours per year. Oh, man. Anyway, y'all take care now. And bye. And, yep, yeah, take them on. Okay, <laughs> so this is the fourth print. <laughs> and as you can see, it does look a little bit strange. I mean, uh, when I started it, everything was going good. No strange sounds or nothing. It was printing for about a half an hour or so. And I thought, okay, it's going to take about another seven hours. Went to bed, got up this morning, and this this was hanging in <laughs> in bed uh, on the bed. And as you can see, well, there's the part of the base that should be down here, and then there should be some legs and part of his body. I don't know. The rest came out really nice. It's really strange. For all, there's even support that is he printed here. And it started mid-air with no other connections. Just wonder how the heck did this happen. Yeah, but anyway, the top part is looking really nice. I mean, maybe I have to print a wheelchair and put him in a wheelchair. And then it might look right. <laughs> <coughs> but on to the next prints.